Hello, so today we're going to look at views in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. If you launch a flight at the gate or in a parking area, your view will default to the walk around mode. So you will probably have already figured this out, but W, A, S and D on the keyboard control the first person view in walk around mode. So if I go A, I go left, D takes me right, S moves me backwards, and W moves me forwards. While in walk around mode, I can press the right mouse button to make the pointer appear. And if I hold the right mouse button down, I can rotate the camera in first person view. Okay? So, if I want to view third person view to actually see my avatar rather than look through their eyes, I need to change a setting in the simulator. So press escape, go to settings, go to advanced options, and you will see allow third person view camera. And that needs to be on. So save and come back and back again. And now we can press the backspace key. So backspace toggles between first person view and third person view. Okay, so if I do that again, backspace, toggles back to first person and back to third person. So while I'm in third person view, you can see that again, W, A, S and D will move us around on the ground. But notice the pilot rotates as he moves. So you don't have to use the mouse to orient to walk when you're in third person view, but you may want to orient the camera. So just rolling the mouse around will do so. Okay, and if you keep pressing forwards, he will walk along in whatever direction, you know, he will walk away from the camera, essentially, when you press W. If you press S, he will walk back towards the camera. Okay, so, to toggle between walk around mode and internal, in, or sorry, um, yeah, internal mode, then or normal mode, as we might call it, we press Shift and C. So we're now in the normal view, the normal cockpit camera view then, if you want to call it that. If you press Shift C again, you'll come back to walk around mode. Shift C again, and we're back in normal mode. If we press Shift and X, we go to drone camera. So there's the drone camera, and again, drone camera controls are the same, W, A, S, and D. But we also have I, J, K, and L. So we can use I, J, K, and L to rotate. So J rotates left, L rotates right, I rotates up, K rotates down. Okay. You can also use plus and minus on the keyboard to zoom in and out. Okay. So then remember, shift and X toggles between whatever view you were in and the uh, drone camera. So shift and X takes me back into the cockpit. When you are inside the cockpit, the key mappings are slightly different. You have to hold shift on with them to move the camera around. So obviously the mouse still works, so we can hold the right mouse button down and we can drag around to look around the cockpit. Okay? But if we want to move the camera, we have to hold shift on. So then we get A is left, D is right, W is forwards, and S is back. Then I, J, K, and L also work, so J rotates left, L rotates right, I rotates up, and K rotates down. Also, Q and E move us up and down, so still holding shift down, E moves us up, and Q moves us down. Okay, if you get in a complete muddle and you just want to reset the camera, press shift and space, and it will reset you back to the pilot default forward-looking view. Okay, so on to the thing that probably everybody's waiting for. How do you set up custom views in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024? Because by default, you might want specific views around the cockpit to help you start the plane up from cold and dark. And the most common ones you, you might want in an Airbus, for example, is to look at the MCDU in you know full screen and also to look at the overhead panel. So. Each aeroplane comes with a set of default views. They are configured to shift and the number keys. So shift and one, shift two, shift three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. Okay, shift space takes us, always takes us back to the normal view. The problem with that is they may not be the views you actually want to use. Okay, and they will be different for every aeroplane. They will be whatever has been configured by the air aircraft developer. So how do we change them? We turns out they've improved this enormously in Flight Simulator 2024. We can map whatever keys or buttons we want to save a view and to load a view. And we get 10 combinations of those. So let's go and have a look in the control configuration. So if we go into controls, make sure we have our keyboard selected. Or you don't have to use keyboard, but I'm going to use it because it makes the most sense for me to show you this. So make sure you have keyboard selected. And then go and search for load. It's just the word load look brings them up. You've got load custom camera zero through nine. And you can see I've already mapped some of them. But notice we've already got conflicts on what some of them do. So if you search by input, the ones I've used on the Airbus are Alt-1 and Alt-2. So if I search by input, I can say what's on Alt and 1. So, sorry, search by input, Alt and 1. Toggle flight assistance. So I don't want that. I just want it to load my custom camera. So if I go in here and click on this and delete that one, you can use the backspace key as well. So I just want load. So you can see if I go back in here for search and search for load, you can see I've got load custom camera and you've got 10 slots you can use and you can put whatever you want in those slots. So I've got this set to keyboard, so it's expecting me to press key combinations. You've also got save. So if you search for save, you've got save custom camera and there are nine or 10 slots. So you can see there were, a lot of these were empty, nothing was mapped to them. So I've gone and set Control Alt 0, Control Alt 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, for example, but I'm only going to use the first two. So if we come back out of here, and this will work for any buttons or any keyboards. So you could have a second keyboard, I guess, or a stream deck or something like that to go and set your views up and then just map the button presses on it. But there you go. Anyway, so resume. So by this token, what I can do in this aeroplane, say I wanted Alt and 1 to look me overhead. I can go and move, so I hold Shift on and get my view where I want it and maybe look overhead by using I. I'm holding Shift down, remember, and then Q will move me further away and I need to adjust it this way a bit. So that's broadly right for the Airbus. We just tweak it a little bit. There we go. So I want to remember that. So I mapped Control Alt 1 as save custom view 1. So Control Alt 1. And it's done it. Yeah. So if I then press Shift and Space to come back to normal, and I want to go back to that view. I can now press Alt and 1 because I mapped Alt and 1 to load custom view one. Yeah, I could have mapped anything. So shift and space will bring me back. So by the same token, what if we want to do the MCDU? So I'll just demonstrate it. So we're going to move across the cockpit with shift and D. Then I'm going to press shift and K to rotate us down. So we'll just rotate straight down. Shift W will slide us forwards. Shift D and you just tweak it. And then you can move up and down. Remember you can zoom as well, but shift Q will drop us. And you just tweak it around until you get it more or less where you want it. That's perfect. So Control Alt and 2 will give me the MCDU. So then if I press Shift Space, if I now just press Alt and 2, because I mapped Alt and 2 to load the second custom view. So Alt and 2. Yep. Alt and 1 is custom view number 1. Shift and Space brings me back to the normal view. So this is where I think this is much better than previous versions of the simulator in that we get complete freedom over how we save custom views and how we load them and what devices we use to do that with. So one more thing to look at then is profiles. The one thing you need to be careful about is the profiles. So if you go into controls, I have been configuring a keyboard 
And you will notice if we go load, so load custom camera, all of these mappings are part of the general control for the simulator. Okay. So every time I have been mapping controls for the Airbus in particular in this case, I have been mapping or changing the general profile. So every time I've got into a new aeroplane and configured any views for it, it will have asked me because it will have been on, notice it says my new general profile. It made that when I made the Airbus. So I need to rename that profile now because these are the views for this particular aeroplane. So if I rename this view, and I'll call it the Ini Builds Airbus A320 V2 keyboard profile. Okay, so we do that because these custom camera views, which are the only things I've altered on the keyboard for this aeroplane, are all in the general profile. So the general profiles here. So this is controlling the simulator, remember. So simulator controls tend to be in the general profile. So the keyboard profile for general is Inibuilds Airbus A320 V2. Okay. So if I wanted to do away with that and go back, so I messed everything up and I wanted, actually I want it back as it was factory fresh. I can scroll through and I can get the 2020 keyboard bindings. Okay. If I want to then switch over to the profile I've just renamed, we can do that. So if we went back to the default ones, look, you can see we've got some custom views in there. If we go and have a look through some of these, have we got a, no, I'm just looking to see what views I have got in here. It's a bit of a mess at the moment because I'm still tidying them up, but you can see how it works. So I've got several different airplanes in there. So I've made sure that I've renamed the one I changed. The reason for doing that is when you are looking at one of the default profiles for a keyboard, as soon as you change anything, or for any control, as soon as you change anything, it will ask you about saving it. Save it under the aircraft name is the easiest way. And the reason for that is the simulator will remember the profile you are using for that aeroplane. So next time you come into it, it will switch back to it. So it makes sense to have different profiles for different aeroplanes, particularly for views. Okay, so if you've set up custom views around the cockpit, it makes sense to name the profile after the aeroplane. So when you first set foot in a new aeroplane, make a new profile based on the default one and start changing it. Okay, so how do you deal with um, uh, so mapped controls that are going to conflict with what you want to do? So if you come back and have a look, so if I go and press, and now I've already un I've already unmapped it, so it's not going to be a problem. I'll show you it in the, in the keyboard mappings. Sorry, this is a little bit confusing. We're going into controls. We're looking at the keyboard, and I want to search by input, or we could go and say um load so those are the there are those load mappings and you can see these ones have got a one next to them what does that mean so let's go and press alt and three so if we search by input and press alt and three i've made a mistake when i configured this so i've configured load and save on alt three and control alt three but there's also toggle taxi ribbon so I want to remove that. Otherwise, if I was to save something on Alt and 3, when I press it, it will toggle the taxi ribbon. So I need to go in here and delete the control and come back. Okay. So now I've only got those things mapped to Alt and 3. So it's worth searching for each input you want to use. So if you search and say Alt 1, the only thing I've got on there is load and save. Search by input, Alt and 2. And the reason for being so careful is watch if I put Alt and 7, toggles head tracking. Search for Alt and 8, resets eye tracking. So you may have other things mapped. So just be careful. 
So before you go mapping anything, search to see what's already on the key combination you want to use. By default, Control Alt and anything isn't used by the simulator. Okay, so hopefully that's been useful and it's explained some of the mysteries of configuring views in the simulator. Obviously, you can create hundreds of custom views and you can have you know have them set up in profiles. And you could have specific profiles just for showcasing things if you wanted to, or for functional, as I've done in this. So Alt 1 shows me overhead. Alt 2 shows me the MCDU and then shift space brings me back. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there before I confuse you too much more. Hopefully see you again soon. Take care.